Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Welcome to the machine shop. No, I'm joking. Yeah. I'm keeping that. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Bloopers. You join me for episode four of Ian's M535 build restoration series. And today we're actually in the machine shop. Uh, what a lot of people don't know about hack engineering is we have got a machine shop in-house, which a lot of BMW specialists don't. This allows us to do all our own machining of all engine components, whether it's bottom end block work to top end cylinder head work. It all happens in-house, which is pretty handy. As you're gonna see, engines come out of Ian's car, it's been stripped down. We saw that hub nut that just didn't wanna come undone, but it's all apart now. And we've cleaned all the parts up and they're, they're in here ready for me to sort of crack on with uh, measuring and machining bits for uh, to accept some nice shiny new components. So uh, let's head on in and have a look what we've got. Righty ho. So we're now sort of in another section of the machine shop. This is mainly where all my sort of strip down and measuring happens. Uh, obviously I've got machines there, the lathe, the mill, as you sort of saw in that bit of footage. And we've also got a couple of other machines about the place for doing seat and guide work. And then we've got our boring and honing sort of further back, but we'll get onto that later. What we've got here is Ian's block, and this is an M30 B34. Uh, obviously they made these in a couple of different variants. You've actually got the M30 B35, but the one to actually, you know, the decent, the decent block that all, all the good, all the good cars, the good power make, use the, the 34. You've actually got a couple of variations there and you've got a lot more meat in between the cylinders on the, on the 35. You've actually got a bit of a water jacket between these cylinders. We're on this obviously a solid between, which means we can actually take this from 92 mil standard out to 94. And of course we wouldn't want to go out there to then put a manky old piston in. So we have got a lovely set of Ross racing pistons. These are American made. They're a, a coated, coated skirt piston and they're a really lovely bit of kit. We've actually already bored this. Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot of footage of that. We've missed that bit, but we will be putting it into our honing machine to sort of give it a final finish. So we're within, where are we? We're within about three fail of our final bore size. And we're gonna, we're gonna get to that final size with sort of the honing technique. We'll start with a couple, quite an abrasive stone, and then we'll sort of move up until we, until we end up with a plateau hone and a nice uh, finish to sort of keep all retention in the bore. Obviously these, Ross Racing Pistons are a lovely bit of kit, and obviously to do all the machine work on the block, we're gonna first want to measure them. So we've got our trusty Mitchell Toyo caliper, and we're actually gonna measure about half an inch down from that skirt. And we are getting 93.92 mil. Uh, they recommend about a four foul clearance on that, so it pretty much takes us to our, our 94 mil final size. We're gonna go slightly bigger, so obviously it is quite a performance engine. So we want obviously a little bit more piston to wall clearance, but we'll get the, the block bolted down on the, the honing machine and uh, we'll start actually doing that finished bore size. So as we saw over on the workbench there, we've compared the pistons, we've measured them up and they're, they're actually a lovely set. So we've now taken our block and we've brought it over to our trusty Delapina. So it's a V450 machine, which we're actually, so it's a power stroke machine. If you don't know much about honing, what we're actually doing is we're finishing the cylinder walls. So this helps with sort of piston bed piston rings bedding in, as well as sort of oil retention in there. So it's pretty vital that we have a decent machine that's gonna give us a nice parallel bore for that piston to run up and down in. So the first thing we need to do is actually bolt down our engine block. Otherwise, as we're doing our honing, the block's gonna be moving about in the machine, which is obviously far from ideal. We also wanna get it so the block's sitting pretty much in line with our, our honing head here, and that sort of keeps everything and helps with getting that, that bore nice and parallel. So we can move that across. As we can see, our block is now fully sort of bolted down to the bed of the machine. I always give them a little, a little shake just, just in case something's not quite right. You know, for force of me shaking, it's going to slide it loose, then uh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine on the machine. So, sort of the first stage of honing, I'm actually going to use quite a coarse grade of stone. So I've got varying different grades here, and I'm actually going to use the coarsest to start off with. hiding right in front of my eyes. So you've got sort of two guide stones, which are actually abrasive, and then you've got sort of a follower stone, which isn't a stone at all, it's just a sort of a soft metal, which helps sort of guide everything and keep, keep everything round. With all our stones attached into the 
the head, we've got our adjuster and this just slots in at the top. And then we can sort of adjust them out like so to match the size of the bore. So now we're going to bring our block down below. Now we want this as in line as we can with the axis of the head. And then our first step is to bring this down a little and expand the stones. Now the last block to have been on this machine was an S54, which is obviously slightly different to an M30, so we need to reset our stops. This is pretty critical, because if we don't do this, then uh, basically the machine's gonna ram that honing stone right through the, the main line of the block, cause a horrendous amount of damage, neck of the stones, probably neck of the block, and there'll be tears all around. our lower stop set it's now time to set the upper stop so this is going to make sure that the likewise rather than sending the honing head through the main line we obviously don't want it coming out the top of the block as it's spinning around because uh, one that will either if it comes out too far will sort of fling out and make a make a massive mess as most things do or if it's just coming out slightly too far we're going to get too much wear at the top of the bore and we're going to lose that parallel finish that we're looking for that one about there Now this obviously hasn't got a mechanical stop, it's purely a micro switch stop that we're going for. Which I think I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with that. So we can now double check everything's tight on all our stops. like so. Head back down. Double check our bottom. Right, with our stop set, we can now get all our splash guards up. As the jobs that come in the machine shop, this is definitely the messiest. Obviously when we're taking material away, we need to keep those stones lubricated. So we're gonna be spraying a, a honing specific oil down the bore as we carry out all the, all the machining. Check that our, our bed's locked, our lock stops are locked, and we're good to go. Um, right, we've now gonna run one last little safety check. We're gonna give it a quick squirt of oil down in there to get everything lubricated. Back up here we've actually got a filtration unit so that's taking all the oil out of the machine, running it through a filter, taking out all the particles of metal and abrasives that are coming off the tooling as we're carrying out the procedures and filtering the oil and sending it back into the machine. Um, probably a bit overkill for the few blocks we do here every day but you know this came out of a, a good old good old fashioned English machine shop so righty ho. So all we're doing there is just checking that mechanical stop. I'd far rather be able to feel it with my hands, just making sure that it's not catching anything that we've got a free flowing head. So I'm, I'm now happy with that. So we can then press our button, set our counter to zero. So that's gonna tell me how many, how many strokes we've done. And then I can sort of set it to turn itself off when it gets to a certain amount of strokes. Uh, it's sort of, it's experience and knowledge as to how many strokes and what abrasive stones I'm using as to how much material we've got to take out. We've already had a measure up of our block, so I've left in this one, if we have a little look. So metric, we're talking about seven hundredths, so just under three foul to come out. Probably gonna take that down to about two, one and a half, two foul to remain with these stones, and then we're gonna change over to a, a slightly finer grain of stone. Righty ho. So 
So as we can see, the head's now going up and down. It's going, it's coming out the top just enough, and it's going down the bottom just enough. We've got plenty of fluid going in there, so everything's keeping nice and lubricated. All right, and my counter's coming down. So I'm gonna let that run for another 10 strokes. And then I'm gonna stop that cycle. And we're gonna undo our head. Bring our head back up. Get these stones up out of the way. And then we can get our bore mic in there. And see what sort of measurement we've got. So after that little pass, we've actually got a bit more meat to come out of the top, which is fine. The machine can cater for that. So if we head back down, likewise, there's no set sort of figure for how tight these stones go in the bore. It's just experience. I remember the first block I ever honed, Colin, the chap who, uh, who sort of helped me learn the bits I know. He, uh, he said, oh, you'll get there in the end. And it took me hours to hone this block. I said, Colin, nothing's coming out. And he said, oh, it's because you're not winding them on enough. I said, yeah, but how do you know? And he said, oh, when you know, you know. And sure enough, he was right. Now I know just, just about the right amount of tension, right amount of torque just to go through that. And that will take out, you know, enough meat that it will, it will hone, not too much that you've got too much friction sort of in, in the ball. Because we want to take a bit more out of the top, we can actually get the machine to run. More strokes at the top, like so. If you'll see the speed of the head has increased, then I can slow it back down. So that'll take a bit more material out of the top of the bore. This machine's fully adjustable, so I can adjust the amount of air, the speed it goes up and down, and also our rotation. At the moment, it's set to, uh, to work out, so we get a good degree of, of crosshatch on our bore. And then it's time for another measure. with a head. And there we go, perfect. We've got about one and a half foul left to come out on that ball, so we're gonna change the honing stones. To something a little bit finer. Winding the pressure on the stones so they can fill up, fill the bore. Check this at the bottom. So this machine will only start stroking if if the stroke's at the bottom. A little safety feature it, so I'll give it a little start like that, and we're good to go. Now these stones really are fine, so they're not taking a lot of material out. What they're doing is, if you put that bore wall under a microscope, you'd really start seeing like the, the peaks and troughs of the actual surface finish of the bore. So this is taking those real sharp edges off the top, and giving it, but at the same time, you don't want it mirror finish because obviously you need to keep a bit of oil retention to, uh, to help with piston, piston wear and cooling. Right ho. We can then pop it back out, have one last measure. Good to go.
Fantastic. I'm now happy that we've got a nice parallel bore. It's the same size at the top, it's the same size at the bottom, and it's also the same size in the middle. And if we turn our measurements through 90 degrees, we've, we've got exactly the same. So I'm, I'm now happy that that bore there is ready to run, run that, that lovely piston that we saw earlier in the video. So that sort of finishes up the process. I won't bore you with the rest or hone you. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. But anyway, don't forget to head over to the channel, give us a subscribe if you wanna see more content and comment below if there's something you wanna see in the next video or videos coming up in the E28 series. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.